Go for it. Freaking what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank. I'm your host, Strider Wilson. We got Aaron going beast mode on the sticks, dude. What up? Dude, what up, dude? Freaking post it up right now, dude. Dude, we're in November, dude. We're in November. You got Thanksgiving coming up. It's around the corner. And you know what? That's a holiday. A lot of people think the meaning of Thanksgiving is, you know, people, the pilgrims, celebrating with the Native Americans and coming together and sharing resources. Sure. Sure part of the story but you know what it's about now it's about dominating your family in any debate <laughs> dominating them any hot take from uncle you know jerry get pinned get out of my face have your facts brush up but also you know you want to have a nice time you don't want to spoil it maybe whoever cooked that meal for you maybe it's mom maybe it's grandma maybe it's you you don't want to spoil that time for them with, uh, you know, by dominating your uncle. So, you know, have some stuff to talk about. History is always nice stuff. Art. That's why today's episode, we're focusing on some art. And don't get me wrong. I'm going to talk a little politics in there, you know. And, you know, your religion, politics, save it for outside, you know. Save it for the, that Thanksgiving football game. Where touch football soon becomes tackle. Great time. One time saw my, my buddy Gavin punch his dad. It was great. It was a great way to ring in thing. Bloody nose. Still fix himself a full plate. It was great. And you know what? The dad kind of liked it. He said, he, he goes, I respected you for that. You know? And now the relationship's stronger than ever. I'm not saying sock your dad. Just because, you know, he called you out of bounds on a sideline play and touch football. You don't need to do that. But you know what? You don't back down on Thanksgiving, dude. And when someone asks you to pass the stuffing, you say, what did you say? <laughs> say what? Please. Absolutely, you're welcome. Stuff like that. I post up at the kids' table, dude. Want to know why? No kids at my Thanksgiving, just by myself. Eat my meal and watch pretty, pretty mediocre football. So, enough of Thanksgiving. I'm looking forward to it. And, and this month, we're gaining knowledge. We're putting knowledge in my dome. So you guys are going to be having some good ass talking points at dinner or just any time in life. But before we get into this episode, and it's an art episode, I love going, I love a nice art episode. I just got to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Tushy. Okay. Bidets, they're huge, they're life changing. Okay. And sometimes in life, you need to aim a little lower to achieve your high self, higher self. And I'm talking about butt care. Okay. Hello, Tushy, dude. It's the best. The bidet changed my life. Honestly, it got rid of the endless wipe. And now I'm having endless comfort. And uh, also, it's a little more eco-friendly. So the wife likes that. Anyway, take care of yourself from the bottom up this holiday season. Visit hellotushy.com forward slash dank and use promo code dank for 10% off your first order. Don't miss out on their uh, spend and get event going on now through November 18th. That's hellotushy.com slash dank. All right. And guess what? It's time to say hello again. Hello fresh. The holidays are right around the corner and HelloFresh can help take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up, everything you need to cook up your tasty meals right to your door, okay? Saving you tons of time. You're going to make Thanksgiving dinner. Take your time there. Don't take time every other day of the week because you know you're living a busy life you got kids you got work you got this and that go to hellofresh.com slash dank free and use code dank free for free breakfast for life oh my goodness one breakfast item per box while subscription is active that's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash dank free with code dank free all right let's get into it dude let's get freaking into it we're talking diego Rivera, okay, a muralist, 
We've done painters. I mean, technically, yes, he's using paint. But his medium, I suppose painting is still the medium, okay? But upon which his canvas, I should say, his canvas are the streets. He's taking art directly to the people. He's inspired. Look, man, I was just downtown. LA's got tons of murals, dude, you know? Maybe even graffiti some of that. I can never get behind these guys who like to graffiti nature. It's like you go on a nice walk, hike in LA, you get there and it's just graffiti, dude. Like, who, who wants to graffiti? Why do that to nature? But look, to a building, to, you know, the sides of freeways and stuff like that, I love it. Enjoying a little art while I'm sitting in my traffic. Rivera, we've got Rivera to thank for, um, you know, many of the murals all over in different cities. And this guy, he was doing it pretty much before anyone. And, you know, obviously he took, drew inspiration from, uh, you know, a lot from Picasso, a lot from Impressionists, okay? Um, you know, we're talking, we're operating in 1920s to 30s here, okay? You're going to see a lot of themes um, coming out of that era. So put your dome into that era, you know what I'm talking about? You know, industry, do pre-war, you know, uh, also this is going to be, we're going to be talking about communism, capitalism here. So just buckle up for Thanksgiving dinner. You know, if, you're, if your Uncle Jerry's a communist, get ready to take him down. Um, or maybe he's not, maybe he's a big time capitalist, you know, and, he, and he's, you know, supports, you know, squeezing out the middleman. Anyway, you're going to have some takes after this pod, whatever, wherever you stand. Okay. Uh, Diego Rivera, together with this, these two other artists, David Alfaro Siquiros and Jose Clemente Orozco, um, leading members and founders of the Mexican muralist movement. Okay. Now, uh, they're drawing in inspiration from European modern masters. Okay. Also, as well as Mexico's pre Columbian heritage. And they execute it in the, in the technique of Italian fresco painting. Frescoes could be your first murals, you know, going back to Pompeii, where, of course, you see dogs with big titties. Always, whenever there's ruins, you will see dogs with big titties. So Rivera handled major themes appropriate to the scale of his chosen art. Massive. These works are massive. Okay. Themes such as social inequality, relationships of the relationship of nature and man, industry, technology, and the history and fate of Mexico. All things likely to come up at your Thanksgiving dinner. So, Rivera establishes himself as one of the 20th century's most ambitious, boundary-pushing painters. And let me tell you what, there's going to be pushback. Okay, I mentioned, you know, you have the, your uh, um, fresco painting in Italy. He studies, he, has, he goes through like sort of a cubist um, period here. So perspective, and you'll see that in some of his works. Check out the YouTube. Also, I'm going to do a great job painting you word pictures so you can listen. Hopefully, uh, you know, if you want it just like to enjoy on a commute, don't go looking up the paintings while you're driving. But if you're on a subway, sure, pull something up. Okay. If you're walking, sure, pull something up. Pull over and pull up, bro. Okay. Um, he spends time in Spain and Paris. Picasso becomes a particular mentor and friend of his. Um, also, even a rival, okay? Um, and like I just mentioned, he's best known for embedding Mexican history, culture, and politics in the ongoing politics um, into his sort of cubist compositions and then into his murals. So buckle up. Also, he lived an, an extravagant life, married five times, most notably to the famous and fellow artist Frida Kahlo. Um, relationship very volatile. Um, also, you know, she famously passed away, um, you know, departed us too soon. Um, that had a heavy effect on him. They were married, I think, twice. Um, but let's focus on the works and what's going on here. I mean, but also you got to say, before we get into Diego Rivera, huge communist. Did Lenin, like, crashed at his house for a while um, when he was being, you know, ousted uh, from Russia at, at one point. And, uh, yeah, dude. So a lot of interesting stuff to look into there, but we're going to be looking to his works, themes, what's going on. Um, you know, 10 of his major works, I'm going to focus on five today are, um, a work called creation 1922. This is sort of chronological history of Mexico, frozen assets, agrarian leader Zabata, Detroit industry, man on the crossroads, 
Flower Carrier, Pan American Unity, The Flower Cellar, La Grande Tenochtitlan, Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in Alameda Park, and The Watermelons. Okay, spanning from 1922 to 57. Uh, we will begin with the history of Mexico. Okay. This is located in, uh, and Aaron, if you want, you can pull this bad boy up. If people are um, listening, they can check this puppy out. Yeah. So this is located in the grand stairwell in the National Palace in Mexico City. And uh, I mean, it's massive, dude. <clears throat> Hundreds of feet uh, spanning across multiple walls. A lot of his works are, are like this. Indoor mural here depicts the major events in Mexican history from the past few centuries, such as, you know, the, the Spanish invasion, Mexican fight for independence, Mexican-American war. Um, also, he even has a reimagined utopian future for Mexico. OK. Um, and all it even goes back to the fall of uh, Teotihuacan. That's like 900 A.D. common era, um, you know, as colonial rule in there, of course. Um, the themes tying these uh, diverse events together, you know, it's all class struggle conveyed clearly through the fresco's central figure, Karl Marx, you know, that could trigger, that could trigger an, an uncle at Thanksgiving dinner. You bring up Marx. Sometimes it's great you take a capitalist and then you take a communist quote just to see what happens. You might not get some gravy past to you. Um, you know, bring a quote straight out of a communist manifesto all of humane history down to the present is the history of class struggle our task is not to reform existing society but rather to construct a new one you know it sounds nice that's the thing about communism they say on paper great on mural also very nice it's always a story of the haves versus the have-nots i mean this is true this is true french revolution all these revolutions you know but when communism comes out of it generally doesn't work. It generally just takes the 1% and makes it really even smaller. And while this mural represents centuries of strife and repression by corrupt colonial ruling classes, its coda is an optimistic, okay, it's an optimistic future. It says, hey, you know, we work together, you know, the laborers come together, work collaboratively, exist in har harmony with nature, ultimately we will prosper. So, I mean, you got to like these themes, you know? Um, so it's, it's awesome. I mean, this right here, you know, it's, this is a history podcast. The title of this piece is history of Mexico. How am I not going to lead with it? You got the sick ass Eagle, you know, eating the snake. I mean, that's where Mexico was founded. Lake Tenochtitlan. That's Mexico city. Um, you got revolutionaries, you got the present past future all coming together on these massive panels. I mean, just freaking, you know, a true, a true masterpiece. And it's just insane, dude. Like how you would go and make this stuff, dude, just fucking up on scaffolding, making it for years at a time. Dude, just smoking a stogie, bro. You know, he always had a stogie, dude. Just posting up, dude. And just painting like a beast. Fucking sick, dude. Unveiling it with the tarps, dude. Just badass. Nothing but, you know, also rare... An artist respected, admired, um, feared in his own time. A rarity. So, you know, he's on the map at this point. His cubist works are big, but, you know, this is... It takes him years to complete these pieces, by the way. Um, he gets commissioned, and he cruises out to Detroit, okay? This is, these are the Detroit Industry Murals, 1932 to 33. Edsel Ford, the only child of Henry Ford, maybe you heard of him, and his wife, Clara Jane Bryant Ford. Okay. Um, now, Edsel Ford, obviously American car magnet, he finances this uh, artist, one of his most ambitious works, they say, Detroit Industry. It takes nine months. Okay. Sets up shop in Detroit. Um, and he's covering the Detroit Institute of Art's central foyer with a series of 27 paintings over four walls. It tells the story of the city's layered history through depictions of its workers, technological advancements, and landscape. And it's also, you know, it's got, it's cut into three 
tiers here, this portion that we're looking at here is just one portion of it. I mean, it's there's there's many more. Like I just mentioned, 27 paintings over four walls. And you have on the bottom here, industry. And you know, he's a he's a fan of industry. He likes it, he's a communist, he like he wants these workers, dude. So they're being glorified here. And they're the, they're the foundation of the city, the working man, flourishing central hub. Also, the time that he's making this, Detroit's thriving. It's not like Detroit is today. Detroit is thriving at this time. Okay? It's coming out of uh, um, the Great Depression, you know, you got, uh, which is not a thriving time, not a thriving time, but he's, but he's capturing that time, okay? You got the agriculture, the natural bounty through images of these, these children nestled between plows and bordered by strapping nude figures. You got to love a nude figure. If you don't have a nude figure, is it even considered art? Not in my book. Not in my book, dude. Okay? Churning molten steel. Assembly line forging candy red cars. Okay? Also, he has the dangers of technology in here. Tools of war. Okay? He's, he's forward looking here. He's saying, look. These cherry red cars, this, this molten lava, this steel, this clanking metal. This can be, uh, this can lead to bad things. He also has a Christian motif here. He's got a nativity scene, but replacing its religious figures with contemporaries, doctors, and patients. Okay? People didn't like that. They cried blasphemy. Blasphemy! Heresy! They erupt over this stuff, dude. He's just trying to pay homage to the doctors here, dude, saying educated people, dude, you know? These are the givers of life. Pretty sick. Pretty edgy, dude, to put it in the nativity scene, dude. Putting a freaking manger next to a factory. Badass juxtaposition, dude. Badass. Okay? Um, you know, Ford was worried. His wife, who I mentioned earlier, she, she enjoyed art. You know? Uh, ultimately, Ford does accept Rivera's piece, dude. The, you know? He was getting pushed back. But, you know, the college students at the time, you know, and factory workers... They fight. They go, look, no, we want this, dude. This this is good representation. Also, Ford's all those cherry red Fords coming out there. He's like, okay, those are sick. Those are fucking tight, dude. I do like those. It's basically an advertisement for me, dude. But, you know, Rivera sneaks in little messages there, dude. You know, the, it's tough to comprehend. You look at these murals, there's a lot going on. To the untrained eye, you're going to miss something, dude. He sneaks in. You know, he sneaks in his communist agenda. America, Henry Ford, obviously big capitalists, right? Huge capitalists having a communist. That's the thing, though. You have these big capitalists. They always want kind of these base, these communist artists. They always, like, want to be accepted by them, too. It's weird. It's like a power thing going on. I, it's an interesting psychology. Um, they're like, look, look, I want to make all the money, but also I want to be accepted by artists and creators at the end of the day. Interesting. Don't know why that is. Maybe we all want to be liked by those that we admire. I don't know. Want to have your cake and eat it too, I guess. So then, moving right along, we have, oh uh, yeah, oh okay, I'm ending with that one. Okay, I just wanted to peek ahead. A work called Creation. Diego Rivera's first government commission mural. Creation was created, um, this is 1922. We're kind of bouncing around timeline here. Um, over the course of a year and covers a thousand square feet. <clears throat> it's an allegorical compensation, uh, composition, obviously, mythological and religious motifs mixed in there. Um, figures in the mural 12 feet high, big, okay? Huge, huge pipe organ surrounding it. So you're blending art here, sound, music, with a uh, you know, visual medium. Um, top, you have this symbol that could re represent the divine trinity, Blessing hands, also Egyptian iconography of Aton, Aton, you know, one of the uh, Egyptian gods. Um, I'm not exact. I don't remember which one that is, but go ch back and check on uh, History is Dank. You know, we cover this stuff. Um, Ra is the sun god, but it could be Aten Ra. I think it is. There's Amun Ra and then Aten, depending on what time, uh, what era or period of Egypt we're dealing with here. Um, 
You got Adam and Eve. You got nine muses, dude. You got Christian virtues, virtues here, dude. Love, hope, faith. On the right side, prudence, justice, strength. Um, on the left, in the sky, you have wisdom and science. Everything in a classic, re classical Renaissance style. Um, so it's interesting to see how he blends the style of allegory. Also, you have the classic, you know, um, you know, the figures, the facial figures, the more rounded. Um, broader strokes sort of um, paying homage and drawing from you know classic Mayan Mexican heritage there so very sick um, blending here dude um, he also he did say though uh, it was too Italian in technique he was kind of like dude, fuck this dude he saw he, he kind of didn't like it like I mentioned earlier on he did evolve here and if you're a true artist you know, you should, if you're, you want to always be evolving. And if you're not, maybe that's time to get out of the game. It's tough to have that self of, um, uh, sense of self-awareness. But he looked back and he said, you know what? I didn't like that I've evolved since doing this painting. But it is nonetheless an important example of um, one of his, more, his earlier works. And, um, you know, his draw of inspiration from that Italian style, sort of seeing him plant some of that, you know, um, Mexican-American style uh, into there, but the lighting seems more classic Italian. Um, so I could see where he could draw that, like that floor, um, that's painted into the work. And, uh, yeah, I could see, I could see where, um, he could be like, you know what? Screw that dude. I'm better than this, bro. Um, also, while painting it, cause he knew he was going to push boundaries. He knew he was going to put, you know, religious allegory and, and juxtapose it with some stuff that might upset people. He felt that not only did he need to obviously have a stogie while he was painting, but he also had a pistol with him at all times because he was worried dude, about his right wing students coming out and being like, dude, fuck this guy, bro. You know, it's more capitalistic students being like, screw this. So he had a pistol. He's like, dude, fuck. You want to come at me while I'm painting, dude? Get out. I got a pistol on me, bro. So, I mean, that's just badass. In order to do my art, He's got to carry his pistol. Very, very uh, gnarly, dude. So you got to freaking love that, dude. Glad that he didn't have to use it, though. Makes me love it more. But I like that he just had a pistol on him and a sick-ass holster. Very sick, dude. Very freaking chill, dude. Okay? And you know what else is chill, dude? Locking yourself away in the bathroom. Okay? It's not hiding. When it improves your health. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of real pooping humans already love Hello Tushy Bidet. <clears throat> Every Hello Tushy Bidet attach, uh, attachment comes with a 30-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty, okay? Hello Tushy Bidet's fresh stream of water cleans your bum two times better than wiping. Even if you use wet wipes, you're still smearing poop around and introducing nasty chemicals to your butt. Okay, using a Hello Tushy bidet also prevents poop particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. A Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in under a year. Dude, <clears throat> my buddy Jeff got me mine. I'll give it to someone as a gift. Some people are afraid to give themselves something good. Don't be afraid. Get yourself one. Get a friend one, Okay. Use these codes I'm about to give you. Take care of yourself. Take care of your friend. Honestly, getting rid of the getting rid of the endless wipe. When I go on the road for comedy and stuff, I miss my bidet, dude. I look forward to coming back home so I can use it, dude. It it honestly changed my life for the better. I'm serious, dude. So take yourself from the bottom up this holiday season. Visit hellotushy.com forward slash dank and use promo code dank for 10% off your first order. Don't miss out on their spend and get event going on now through November 18th. That's hellotushy.com slash dank. Okay. Also, look, the holidays are right around the corner. HelloFresh can help take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door, saving you tons of time. Holidays are hectic. HelloFresh, 15-minute meals. Come in. Boom. Let's go. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes you to get delivery. You know, you deliver it. You got the charges. It racks up. You, those are expensive to get those meals delivered to you, okay? And it's wasteful. You got all that plastic and stuff. 
You know, HelloFresh, I enjoy the cooking process and I enjoy a quick cooking process. Things are measured out. My wife and I like to cook together. We like to do it in a quick way. You know, sometimes you're coming in from straight home from work. You're a little bit moody. You're like, let's put dinner on the table now. How come it can't be done? Put on a little bit of music. Enjoy that 15 minutes. That's what I like to do. And you know what? My wife's vegetarian. We make the vegetarian meals, but they got delicious looking meats, fresh, good ingredients. Okay. I'm using them. I'm loving them. I love, I love the chickpea Mediterranean dish, dude, making a little tahini sauce. Never knew I was going to make that. Never knew I'd have the skill to. Guess what? I do now. Thanks to HelloFresh. So go to HelloFresh.com slash DankFree and use code DankFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash DankFree with code DankFree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right. Back to the action, dude. We're cruising right along here. Our next work uh, by Diego Rivera is, uh, it's rules of the game. Oh, wait. Oh, hold up. How did this get in here, dude? This is a Boris Vallejo. Yep. Always seems to sneak its way in here, dude. My bad. Dude, you've got a very, very sexy mythological jacked peloton instructor uh warrior here posing over with a beheaded robot with he-man sword it seems like big time he-man conan the barbarian sword in the back you have these giant you know looking stalagmite structures with um you know 5g towers that your conspiracy theory friends will tell you will activate the vaccine but she has a very uh, armor all along her right arm definitely was not vaccinated um, with Pfizer or any sort of uh, COVID vaccine in that right arm, left arm maybe, but she's lifting. And, and what's going on here, it seems as if maybe this robot, you know, definitely could have been maybe a, you know, I could see this Amazon warrior having an OnlyFans and maybe this fan wanted to, you know, meet her in public and, and she said, get away. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, take out some goblins in these stalagmite structures behind me. Um, and so she beheaded this robot um, and said later. So those are the rules of the game, you know, for an OnlyFans subscription. Just keep it online, you know, keep it like that. Don't try to get too weird. Um, and maybe this robot, you know, it looks like he has quite a menacing face. You know, it looks like maybe um, an orc from Lord of the Rings meets a sort of a bionic um, vessel or body here. In any case, he's been decapitated. She's looking down upon him saying, look, bro, you cheat. Maybe they were in a relationship, you know? He w he's on the bottom here. He could have been a finesse bottom for a robot, you know? And, you know, she says, hey, look, you try to cruise out. You try to, you know, I said, you know, go recharge. And the robot was like, mm, error, error. And then she just freaking took him out. And this could be a take, you know, Diego Rivera. If he was trying to interpret this, he could say, you know, this is a man, human, and machine, you know, interacting. You know, who's going to take over? This could be AI. This could be a case for AI here. Maybe Diego Rivera saw this coming, you know, ages ago. And, uh, you know, maybe this being became t entirely sentient, right? Started making choices of its own. Wanted to go out. So maybe he was talking too much saying, hey, hey get your vaccine she's like look i don't know i'm too healthy right i'm a fit model you know that was the thing you know he's like no do it do it she's like you do it. he's like i'm a robot well, i'm not gonna do something you don't do boom head lopped off with that conan sword also could you know if they're in a relationship she could just be like look i need you to make decisions use your head then she's holding it up use this and, you know, yeah, she could probably fix it. He said, uh, so what do you want to eat tonight? Yep. Head gone. Head, you're, it's gone. Don't ask me. That's why you got also, hey, go to HelloFresh. They're going to help you out. You know what I'm saying? You classic debate. What are you in the mood for tonight? Oh. Do you know how many broke, breakups have started with that phrase? I'm kind of in the mood for Mexican food. Yeah, I just had Mexican three Thursdays ago. Okay, should we do um, some Indian food? No, you don't really like Indian food. Wait, but I suggest, you know, I, it's fine. No, you're, you don't want that. Do you not want it? I could. What else are you thinking? Oh. 
before we know it, you're heating up a, a freaking can of Campbell's chunky soup and going to bed angry at each other. You know what I'm going to have for dinner, babe? A few IPAs. And I'm going to watch my old wrestling highlights. Good night. That's how that conversation ends. This robot was probably, probably just trying to watch some wrestling highlights. She said, hey, good luck watching them with no head. Classic. Classic. I love when a Boris Vallejo sneaks in here. I don't know how that happens. But it's always a real treat. Rules of the game. Never seen that one before. I love it. Play by the rules, bro. You know, if we're talking communism and, and capitalism, classic communism. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> you know? Maybe that rules of the game is more befitting than we thought, making its way into this pod. Our final work here from Diego Rivera. Moving right along, getting you to work on time. Man at the Crossroads. Okay, this is a fresco by Diego Rivera in the Rockefeller Center, New York. And you might go, I've been to Rockefeller Center, New York. I've never seen this there. It's because it was controversial. Because it included an image of Lenin in Soviet Russia, right there at the center of capitalism, right there, Rockefeller, the cabal. Okay, despite protests from artists, Nelson Rockefeller ordered its destruction before it was even completed. Okay? Only black and white photographs exist of the original, okay, incomplete mural. These were taken uh, when Rivera got word from one of his assistants that Rockefeller, Rockefeller was going to take it down. He went in there and goes, hey, go take some fucking photos of this, bro. Might want these for later. Good thing he did. Okay? Because he repainted the composition in Mexico under the variant title, Man, Controller of the Universe. And if you're looking at it, you can see this sort of McConaughey, interstellar-looking pilot with a, sort of a sad look on his face, with, you know, flanked by these sort of butterfly wings. And he's there at the helm, piloting this ship going through time and space and everything around it. Um, you got a lot, of, a lot going on here, sort of four sections here. Um, you've got let's uh, it depicts many aspects of contemporary social and scientific culture in the center you have this uh, it's a work man he's depicted controlling machinery before him is a giant fist emerged holding an orb nothing ever good came from an orb depicting the recombination of atoms and dividing cells and acts of chemical and biological generation um, hello uh, nukes this is painted in 1934. This is before nukes. Okay? A lot of foresight in these Rivera works. Okay? Um, from the central figure, uh, four propeller-like shapes. I called them butter, butter, butterfly shapes. Um, you can kind of think of those, you know, what do they call those um, aircrafts in Dune? A lot of my bros are going to give me flack for not knowing the name of those things, dude. Anthropo, anthro, whatever fucking things but they kind of look like little dragonfly wings uh pr these propeller like straight shapes stretch to the corner of the composition depicting arcs of light created by giant lenses anchoring the left and right edges of the space okay anchored together all draws your eyes into the into the center you know it's it's the thing it's kind of like a rhesus pieces these rivera works there's no wrong way to take it in but if you stare long enough the brain finds the right way okay the intended way he described these elongated ellipses as elongated ellipses, right? Within these cosmological and biological forces, such as exploding suns and cell forms, were depicted. These represent the discoveries made uh, possible by the telescope and the microscope. Okay, so he has everything going on from he's he's really looking into the atoms, the inner inner tiny tiny workings of the universe, right there, very small, while also uh, dealing with the cosmos at the same time. Um, he also has modern and social life here. It wouldn't be a Rivera work if it didn't. Wealthy society women are seen playing cards and smoking at the left. Opposite the right, on the right, you have Lenin is seen holding hands with a multiracial group of workers. Also, that's, you know, 
uh, very forward thinking as well. I mean, don't we love that nowadays? Soldiers and war machinery occupied the top left above the Society of Women in a Russian May Day rally with the red flags was seen at the right above, the, above Lenin. May Day, evil day, con- according to the conspiracy theorists, evil. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because you say when your ship's sinking. Why do conspiracy theorists hate May Day, Aaron? No idea. I've yeah. never heard it. They say that's the most evil day besides Halloween, which we just celebrated. Weird. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Anyway, these, con- these contrasting visuals and social visions, the debauched rich is what Rivera would call it. They watch the unemployed while war rages on and socialist utopia ushers ushers ushered in by Lenin on the right. Beyond the giant lenses to the left, the right were depicted figures contemplating the central scene behind which were gigantic classical statues, merging of eras, always history being invoked in a Rivera painting. The one on the left depicted by an, ang- an angry Jupiter who raised holding uh, a-, a thunderbolt being struck off by a lightning strike. Um, the one on the right was a headless seated Caesar. For Rivera, these represented the replacement of the superstition by the scientific mastery of nature and the overthrow of authoritarian rule by the liberated workers. It's Caesar, the ultimate dictator. The bottom part of the painting was depict, is, uh, depicted that controlled the growth of the natural resources in the form of a variety of plants emerging to the roots, visible in a cutaway view under the soil. However, the section was never completed. Only exists later in the recreation in the composition in Mexico. I was fired up right there. That's why I said it like Mexico. I got fired up. So, on April 24th, just a history of the creation of the painting itself, kind of going back then, merging out of the interpretation here. The New York World Telegram newspaper published an article attacking the mural as anti-capitalist propaganda. Sure, that's part of it. It's true. There's a lot going on here. We just went over that. A few days later, Rivera added the portrait of Lenin to the work. He said, fuck you. He doubles down. The dude carries a pistol. He smokes a stogie, dude. He's horny, very horny guy. This precipitated a major controversy. So uh, the bad publicity generated here, Rockefeller's like, look, I don't want this. He, Rockefeller's just trying to be a philanthropist. He's trying to, you know, get an artist in here that the people like. Uh, he's asked to remove the picture of Lenin, excuse me, Lenin. He refuses. Instead, he offers to add Abraham Lincoln. I'll take your Lenin and I'll throw you a Lincoln, bro. That sounds cool to me. It's compromise. Rockefeller's like, look, I fucking love Lincoln, dude. Don't get me wrong. I love Lincoln, dude. Everyone loves Lincoln, dude. Nope. This guy, uh, Todd Robert, this guy Todd Robertson. Todd is his name, dude. Uh, great name, bro. He's the dude who like technically works for Rockefeller, commissioning it. He's like, look, nope. Pay Rivera out. You're done. Get out of here. Um, covered in drapery, uh, left incomplete, despite protests from the art lovers and attempts to get it moved to the Museum of Modern Art. Look, 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 we'll get it out of your building. Blah, blah, blah. It's just, this is art. Gets destroyed by work, man, dude. They fucking wipe it away. Gone. Gone. Makes newspaper headlines. Gone. Man, controller of the universe. Okay, is what it's known as now, man at the crossroads originally. Now, man, control of the universe. Almost identical in Mexico. Never will be the same, though. Glad that he redid it down there. Um, So, badass, dude. New version has, you know, Trotsky, Marx, Engels. You also, you know, you also got Darwin in there, and he puts Rockefeller in there, and John D. Rockefeller Jr. He puts him in there, and they're seen drinking in a nightclub with a woman. Above their head is a dish of syphilis bacteria. You mess with the artist, he's gonna get you, dude. Because you destroy my painting. Guess what? This one ain't going nowhere. And guess what? Boom. Zing. He got the last word. Supposedly, he got the last stroke, I should say, of his brush. And you 
will have the last word. Or you will make your uncle say the last word. You will pin your uncle. And that's where it came from. That's the ultimate Thanksgiving tradition is pinning your uncle over political or religious differences at Thanksgiving and saying, say uncle. Okay? Make your uncle say uncle. You go, you call me uncle. That's how it started. So now you're equipped, dude. Someone comes at you, well, you know, basically, you know, this entire administration, you know, turning everything communist. Oh, really? Interesting. Well, you know, and uh, Rivera's work, um, man at the crossroads, which, you know, was originally painted where? And then he won't have an answer. And you go, that's right, bitch. You don't know. Well, now where it exists in Mexico City and known as man in control of the universe, um, you know, there's an interesting reference to the proletariat on the uh, right section of the, uh, I believe Re Rivera referred to them as the ellipses. Um, you know what an ellipses is? It resembles a vagina? No, you've never been in one. Sorry. Excuse me. Get up. Then he goes, what did you say to me? Boom. You pin his ass. Boom. You see how that just went down? That's Thanksgiving, dude. But I wish you all peace and well, good tidings at Thanksgiving dinner. I hopefully you don't have to pin anyone. We don't resort to violence. And if you do pin one, keep it in the family and keep it in the living room, not at the dinner table. Hopefully on some carpet. Or maybe it's just a nice elbow or a good little rib shot when you try to get open in a game of touch football. You know? Keep it on the court. Keep it civil. And after you do, you shake hands, you give eye contact, and you say, hey, I've loved you. Always half. In a Scottish accent. And other than that, fired up that our artistic knowledge has just grown even greater. Look for these stuff. Check out murals when you're driving around your city, driving around your town. See if you can see some references, uh, some inspiration, maybe something invoked <clears throat> from a Diego Rivera work. You probably will. Have fun doing it. Other than that, leave a review. Questions, comments, suggestions, corrections, always here for them. Strider Wilson Shows at gmail.com. Check out the Patreon and freaking stay stoked. All right, dude, let's.